and gents. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, what we'll do today is part number seven in the series uh, of um, A and B unit 10. And it's a very um, straightforward five millimeter steel, 0 0.5 millimeter steel angled connector, an angled connector with two four millimeter holes in. And uh, I've drawn it in this way because um, that is the way it is uh, orientated in the uh, assembly drawing. So that is how the part will be used. Um, it, it's not critical, but uh, I, I just feel when, uh, when it comes to doing the orthographic projection that the orthographic projection should be done in the correct orientation. So uh, the view from above here will be uh, that way. Uh, so that's going to be an, a thin L shape. And uh, the front view, um, so that's going to be the side view going in that way. So we're looking at a, um, a half oblong piece there with a forming with a hole, and then a the front view going that way. Uh, nearly identical, with slight differences in the dimensions, uh, but we'll get to that once we get started. So. Um, this bit here is 11.5 millimeter long and uh, that is 11 so I said there's half a millimeter difference uh, between those um, and the holes are two millimeter from the edges so slightly different from the holes uh, on the other pieces um, so um, what should we do uh, I think we'll start with the side view today uh, let me just get this one out of the way a little bit into the corner here um, I'll keep my grid lock on and as usual I have um, opened my template and I immediately saved it as part 7 so I don't um, uh, interfere with my template that should be kept fresh and clean all the time um, uh, so we'll start with a rectangle and uh, make sure I'm on relative here not absolute or polarized uh, polar sorry uh, so click make sure you're on relative rectangle tool and uh, we've got a grid lock on I'm just gonna start uh, down here I think yeah let's start in there we can always uh, change the views around but uh, uh, what did I say 11.5 wide uh, and again, we're drawing on scale two to one, so that's uh, 23. And then uh, up, we have got 8.5 times two, 17. Okay, yeah, that's good. And then we need to round off the corners um that's the first thing we're gonna do so we've got to the corners and i think if i can't yeah six millimeter i think was the correct no it's not it was actually 12 millimeter right okay so i'm gonna undo that got that many dimensions in my head at the moment it's uh yes that's perfect no it's not hmm let's get back to 10 millimeter when i round the corners on this is slightly different but that is because it's an isometric view multiple undos is a fabulous thing okay we'll go down to nine millimeter millimeter it is um, so I'll put the radius on there afterwards but um, that's uh, the uh, first view 80% uh, done because all we need now is a circle and as usual the holes in this kit is uh, four millimeter and I'm just gonna plonk it in there and then we'll position it accurately 
and the usual way we do that is by using our uh, dimensions or rulers let me just put that down oops Shall start exactly on the edge there. And I'm going to put my radial lock on and I'm going to zoom in so I get that accurate dimension. And we wanted two millimeter, that's in four because we are again on a two to one scale. So if you have trouble getting it correct, just zoom in and you should be getting more accuracy. Uh, is that one millimeter mark I'm after? There. Okay, I'm gonna now I'm gonna zoom out and I'll pull it to about there, which and that is correct actually so that's good and then I want the same now it's a little bit untidy here I might have to change that dimension on the uh, um, lock so we used nine millimeter I might have to go down to eight millimeter uh, but that's okay for the time being and I'm going to yeah uh, parallel dimension is fine let's go to that point there and radial look back on so that it becomes a straight line and again we need to zoom in and make sure that we get a four millimeter distance perfect and then I'll just pull that to the side and pull it down a bit. No, I can't do that. That's fine. Uh, let me see if I can get a straight line out of that by going to start edit. And I'm just gonna pull that down a bit. In fact, no, down there, yeah. Will that give us a straight line to deal? No, not quite. So I'm going to bring it down there. That's fine. And then I want to bring the whole thing up and radial lock on so that I only move in one direction at a time. Perfect. Yes, thank you. And then we can fine tune that circle. So that it sits exactly on that line there. And so, oh, I've got radial lock on. That's why I didn't want that on now. I want to be able to move it freely. So I have to coordinate my, my uh, actions with the mouse. And there we go go yes so that is now two millimeter from the edge or any edge here that's fine um, a little bit untidy here now so let's do a bit of housekeeping uh, start edit and let's pull that one out a bit there looks better and in fact what I'll do is I'll pull this one all the way up I'll put the radial lock on now so I only wanted to move it in one direction and I'm going to move that one up here and it's just to make it a little bit more tidy um, it's a small part so um, Uh, and 
that is mostly it for that view. You will have to add a few dimensions. Uh, let's put the snap to command, the attach command on there and there. And that should be 8.5. Perfect. And then that and that. I need to go to horizontal now. So when you're in horizontal mode, it doesn't matter what point you select uh, to snap it to, it will automatically. Right, so I missed that point slightly. 11.49, that's acceptable. Uh, we have, this is, uh, a toy, uh, a toy kit, and uh, we 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 have I have by measuring identical parts found that there are quite large tolerances uh, on on some of these parts. Uh, identical part can be uh, up to half a millimeter apart in in some cases, um, which in an engineering terms is unacceptable. But this is a toy. This is not a part for an airplane. Um, or uh, a racing car, so so they are um, acceptable tolerances. And I'm going to add that um, later on uh, to the title box here, where we're going to put the tolerances in. Uh, I'm going to measure up a few identical parts and find out what the maximum difference is, and then. Uh, but at the moment, uh, I think we're looking at the tolerance of um, plus minus 0 0.5 millimeter, um, which is quite quite a lot in many ways. But I said this is a toy, um, not not uh, a, a high spec part for an iPhone or a, uh, an aeroplane or a racing engine. So uh, that's acceptable. Right, that's the uh, side view uh, complete. And then we're going to do the um, front view here. The front view is almost identical. Uh, so we're going to cheat a little bit here. Uh, why? Uh, why make our lives uh, difficult um, when we can make it simple? So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm not going to copy the dimensions yet because I said there are slight differences. Copy that. Pull it over here. And this time we're looking at it from that away, which means that the, uh, the part will have the rounding on either uh, other end. That's fine, we'll just swap it around like so. Um, but this part is also slightly shorter, so we need to shorten it a bit. That's not a problem. So I'll show you how to shorten this. Um, no, I didn't put grid lock on, but that's fine. Um, what we'll do is uh, bring up a ruler for ourselves. So uh, let's grab a horizontal dimension there and put grid lock on now this i said was 11 millimeter long so these dimensions here will stay the same but it's just shorter on this end here so i'm gonna make sure this time i hit exactly on the tip of that yes perfect and then I'm going to take uh, the attach command off, but the um, radial lock on so that I get a perfectly horizontal dimension. And I want that 11 millimeters, uh, i.e. 22. Uh, 22. Exactly. Okay, now I need to zoom in a bit. So I said the more you zoom in, the more accurate you can be. So it's the resolution we're talking about here now. And yes, so what, uh, what we're going to need to do now, and I have actually forgotten a little detail, which I'll add to this anyway. Um, 
just to double check that I got that right. So one is 11.5. Got a slightly inaccurate vernier here. This comes down to a tolerance. No, I'm, uh, I'm going to leave it at 11. Um, so, uh, what do I need to do now? Um, I'm just going to draw a line. And then we're going to position that exactly on the 11 mark. Okay. Um, and again, to make our life a little bit easier, I'm going to just edit that, drag it down a bit so that we get those nice horizontal lines there. That helps us. And uh, I'm just going to draw. I'm going to start. Uh, I'll actually start on the step block. Uh, it doesn't matter if I hit exactly on the speed but yet. Drag that out like so. Zoom in. And then what we're going to do is now take step block off. And we only want to move it in a horizontal uh, direction. So I'm going to put radial lock on and make sure we hit exactly on that line. Perfect. Oh, why did that not? Something's gone weird. Why is that? I said there are a few bugs with tutors on the right. Let me take radio lock off then. So we are waiting for a new release of 2D design tools uh, where um, a fair few of the bug fixes are done. So we are now using the snipping tool to get rid of the loose ends and then all I need to do is get rid of those lines there. And that is the correct uh, dimensions of our uh, front view. Okay. Um, what I need to do, which I forgot to do on this one here, is add the hidden details. Remember, we are looking that away, so that means that the thickness of the uh, metal here is hidden from view, uh, but we indicate it by putting in hidden, hidden um, in as a hidden detail. And uh, again, I'm gonna put a little dimension on here which is going to be the thickness of the metal which is 0 0.5 millimeter let's put the radial lock on and uh, again we are on twice the scale so that is a one millimeter line exactly yes thank you let's leave that there Okay, that is a very messy drawing, but uh, we'll uh, tidy that up. Start edit, and let's drag that down to about here. And we're gonna get some nice lines there as well to help us out. And again, we need a horizontal line. And if you can remember, um, that the hidden detail line is not a solid line and we're lucky here because we can hit straight on that's perfect then I'm just going to snip the end bits off wrong I want to keep that dimension Let me delete that. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're slightly out there. So I'm going to take step lock off. 
and see. No, we're not. That's just a visual disturbance. Okay, let's change that from a solid line to a dotted line with a five millimeter pitch. Okay, so that's the hidden detail. And then we're going to tidy this up a little bit. So I'm going to just pull that down. That's better. A little bit closer. No. Better like that. Okay. And once again, why, why, uh, you know, make our lives difficult when we can just select that, copy it, and bring it over here to this view. And so we're now just going to fine tune this. So uh, I'll do the dimensions first. Pull that up a bit. And perfect. And then I can just pull that down a little bit there. In fact, I'm going to keep keep that line above there, just so that I can orient my line here. So that we get that bang on. All right, that's fine. And then all I need to do is extend that. And then pull that down so there's a little gap there. Fine. And then tidy it up by snipping the end bits off. And there we go. That is uh, our front and side view complete. So, what I'm going to do now is select those. I'm going to deselect the. Um, dimensions but I'm going to group this so it's one one unit so it doesn't fall apart when I start moving it around I'm going to do the same here uh, make sure I've got none of the dimensions control G is group click OK and what is the last view we need is the view from above and that's an 11.5 uh, by 11 uh, L shape and the L shape will be in the position of that way and that way okay yes let's grab a rectangle and let's put the grid lock back on and let's start in this corner here somewhere fine so we go 11.5 sideways, that's 23. And we go up 11, 22. No, we don't. Uh, um, uh, I got that wrong. In fact, we go sideways one no we don't we go sideways 23 that's correct but then is the thickness of the metal of course silly me right okay yes so that is the first and then we've got an l shape uh, or to complete the l shape sorry uh, then this one is going to be one uh, i'm gonna do go to the right i'm gonna do uh, yeah, one, so that's the thickness of the material, and then we go 22 up. Yes, there's our L shape, so that's our view from above. Okay, so I hope you can see now that this L shape is that view from above there. Okay, and then we need to get rid of 
these corner bits here. We need to tidy those up. So there's two of those there and then two extra bits there. They don't show, but they're there, trust me. And um, as usual, when we bend uh, a piece of metal, there will be a slight radii on here. And that is just a one millimeter radius to round off that edge there. So it's the outside edge that gets rounded. Normally this stays the same because it'll be pressed over a metal shape or former of something. Um, you could possibly argue that there's a slight radii on these edges here as well, but um, we'll, we'll leave that. Um, uh, and what do I need to do now? I need to align these uh, up so they are perfectly um, in 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 uh, what well, is a proper orthogonal view. So um, I'm gonna select that, group it, and then what I want to do is I want to line this up with the left hand edge here. Okay, so I'm go to my space, and I want the left hand edge there. Click OK and click on the actual side view. Perfect, now these are lined up. And I need to do the same with this. Uh, I'm gonna be daring and select the dimensions with this as well. It might not happen, but uh, certainly the um, shape itself should line up so this time we're going to line it up with a top end here so uh, top so i'm going to line this up with the top edge there has it done that yes it has okay it's unfortunately dragged the bottom uh, dimension all the way up as well that is not a problem because i'll just pull it down again so make sure my radial lock is on then. I just pull it in one direction. That's too far. Let's put step lock on instead. Make it go a little bit up there. And that can go up to the top here. That correct? Not quite, it has gone slightly awry by that. I'm gonna adjust it sideways, so I'm gonna put step block off. And I want it exactly there. Yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull that up a little bit more, a bit more of a gap. Ideally, you don't really want the dimensions to touch the drawings. There should be a little gap between them. Um, what else do we need to do now? Well, we're missing dimensions on this one here. So let's do a horizontal one. So I'm just gonna snap into that corner there. So when I choose horizontal here, it doesn't matter which corner I grab, uh, it'll still give me a perfectly horizontal dimension. Okay, and the same with a ver um, vertical, it'll, it'll lock to vertical so that we can do the same from uh, there and there because those are the two edges I want the vertical dimension in that should be 11 if we've done it correctly yeah okay so as you can see now the um, dimensions extend into the drawing so we just need to tidy that up a bit the reason why I didn't pick this corner is because it isn't a corner anymore it's a rounded um, let me just pull that sideways there Okay, and then I pull this one down. There. In fact, what we can do is pull that up a little bit more. Like 
like so. And just fine tuning it so that it doesn't actually touch the room. Um, anything else? Yes, we need the thickness of the material. Now I'm just going to choose parallel. That's fine. Use the snap in, which makes it snap to the corners. We should get a 0 0.5 there. Okay, that's a bit messy. the other side there beautiful okay so when you present your drawing please make sure that um, you know it is uh, presentable uh, so to speak um, so let's uh, get in on the Uh, guide where how can I select? All right, okay, there we go. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, what else am I missing here? Uh, you don't want the drawings too untidy. That is possibly a little bit too much down here. So I would probably take that one away and move that over here. So uh, I'm not going to position it in 100% in now, but it, it's just to show you that we, we don't want the uh, engineering drawings too cluttered. Um, I need to position this perfectly, sort of, uh, or, or correctly. Um, what else could I do with? I could do with a radius on the uh, circle. Uh, click and hold and get the, either a diameter or a radius, whatever you prefer. And let's get a radius on this one here. This is a small part, as I said, so, um, you know, it, it easily becomes quite cluttered. You can um adjust that in uh by double clicking and uh you can uh, i think uh, possibly uh, adjust the text size on this i can't remember which uh ah yes so you can choose what font to use text to use and also the uh, specified height so if we may we could possibly take this down to three millimeter maybe that wouldn't do it i'm not going to do that now um but that is the way to adjust the text size um you might be able to do that individually if you go to property yes so if i wanted to um just make the uh, text size here a little bit uh, smaller so i've now deselected uh, the drawing itself i want to select my uh, dimensions oh you have to do it one by one how irritating right okay so you can select them individually if you want uh, it's not something i would demand because it's it's a bit time consuming but i'm just going to show you how it works so if i change that to two millimeter you can you know, see that the text is smaller uh, that is something that you probably would want to do uh, before you start dimensioning by putting that in as a default on the settings here so you go into text and change it here and then when you start drawing every single thing will be two millimeter or three millimeter whatever diameter uh, that was sorry, um, dimension you, you want that so i'm going to undo that i'm just going to keep mine at four millimeter height that is part seven finished okay